the quote, imaginary world of the matrix, uh, and now something is, is more real about that. Um, and I'll get back to why these are that way. So the third transformation happens in the final movie, right? And so now we've got thinking has been saved, feeling has been saved. How does the will get saved? Well, this is very interesting. Um, one of the things that I did is I, uh, I saw the second movie, and I was still very impressed with the way what I had understood from the first movie was still sort of playing out in what seemed to be lawful ways. So I actually made some predictions of what would have to be the case in the third movie if my ideas had some merit. It would, if, if this kind of a pattern was going to hold, that would mean specific things. There would be certain things that they would have to more or less do in order to bring the archetypes to a close. And basically, the things that I came up with happened, and of course, whatever cinematic form they presented, but happened uh, according to the same archetypes. So in the third movie, the will, the will can't go out and say the thinking, it can go out and say the thinking and feeling. It does something, it uses its hands out there, right? Well, the will now can't operate on itself in that way. So the will, in order to transform, has to go through its kind of inversion process which we could call surrender. So the will now cannot be the will of Neo, which is in, in uh, the third movie, he is actually in a certain way finally becoming Neo. Thomas Anderson in the first, the one throughout the second movie, and Neo transforming over the third movie. So he actually has to end up realizing at the end, he's been fighting Smith the whole time, right? And he's just going through these motions, and he does really well because he's you know, a very transformed being. But he keeps fighting with his outer limbs. He keeps expressing his will in the same old way towards Smith. That's not going to work. The only way that Smith is going to be transformed himself is through the action of the surrender of Neo to that very being of Smith. So what has to happen? Just like Neo transformed Smith in a certain way in the beginning, uh, or at the end of the first matrix, by diving into him and transforming him, now Neo must be, you know, Smith must dive into Neo in order to transform Neo from the inside out. But what's really happening is there's some subtle things with what the Oracle is doing. You know, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but Neo has to give up, right? He cannot, no, he can no longer continue the same kind of fighting that was going on. This is one of the important aspects that. Uh, helps understand the violent aspect of the movie, which is extremely prominent. And I, we can talk about that in the questions if you want. So he has to then surrender to this being Smith. And through that surrender, they connect in a way that is totally new, and in fact requires a third capacity, intuition, which now is a connecting of beings in a direct way. It's not um, imaginative sort of trading of pictures. It's not inspiration in which it's um, a much deeper openness to the other, but still with a kind of barrier between oneself and the other. In intuition, that barrier is dissolved, and, and, and one actually enters into the experience of the other fully. And that's what has to happen in order for Neo to transform his will so that he can be now a complete human being. And in doing that, he simultaneously, Smith goes through a process. Smith goes through actually what we call polar development throughout all three movies, based on what Neo is doing, but on a different track, um, which we can, we'll see if we can get there. Maybe there you are. Um, okay, so going a little bit further, looking at this first, the first three movies, actually I'll flip this around. Maybe this will make some sense now. <laughs> so here's three movies, one, two, three, and these are different uh, things that I'm trying to point out, I hope you can read it. So what we have, we've seen what we've already said, we have thinking, feeling, and willing, imagination, inspiration, intuition, Thomas Anderson, the one, to Neo. Now we have some new things. Uh, well, we kind of talk about this too. Neo's hand to Morpheus as head, Neo's hand to Trinity's heart, 
and now Smith's hand, the hand of the other, to Neo's heart. Right? He's opening himself up to be transformed by the other. So then we have now this, which these are um, anthroposophical terms. They're not actually specifically anthroposophical, but uh, refer to <coughs> concepts that are directly talking about the spiritual world. So here's the physical. The etheric, um, simply we can imagine as the life forces, the forces that keep your physical body from decaying. And we have the astral, which is a way of saying how your senses work to take something that's out there and represent it in a, on the inside as an experience. So this astral capacity, in fact, the whole world of the matrix is in a way representative of what is happening in the astral worlds. And the thinking is precisely what needs to become awake with imaginative capacity to find its way in this realm. So the transformation of the thinking into uh, the capacity of imagination happens in a way in the astro- in, with respect to the astral world. And the response is that then you can see the code of the matrix, in imaginative thinking. In the second movie, we have then the etheric realm. And this is why he is able to work directly on the heart of Trinity. This is the, the formative forces that's keeping her alive. And he's able to provide that because he's transformed his affair. So that allows him to then also stop the sentinels. So then we have the physical world, and in the third movie, you'll notice that there's a progression in the matrix. There is essentially almost nothing that happens except what's happening in the matrix. There's a few shots of inside the Nebuchadnezzar um, ship, right? Other than that, it's all in the matrix. In Reloaded, we have a little bit more. We actually get to Zion and see things happen there. And in Revolution, it's almost more, most of it is in the actual physical world. It's this war between the machines and the humans. And there's a lot of physical fighting, and there's a lot of stuff about Zion. So there's a continuous movement towards the physical, where in Neo, who can, at the very end, transform the physical, having the capacity of intuition, then becomes light. He becomes transformed from the inside out. And in so doing, he also works with Smith in an interesting way. So you'll notice I have up here this word, Lucifer. Well, so we, we can start to imagine how the whole world of the matrix is actually representative of the spiritual world. So just as, you, the, you know, there's all this talk about the matrix as a dream, and Morpheus, you may reckon, remember, from your Greek mythology, is the god of dreams, and Morpheus, who is entranced with the, what the oracle has told him, but then we realize the oracle is actually a program because everybody in the matrix that is not a human is a program. And what that simply means is that those are beings who don't have a physical body. So they're, they're incarnated in a way only into the etheric, but not into the physical. So these are spiritual beings, the oracle, the programs, the Merovingian, all of those people, the architect, right? These are all in a certain way spiritual beings. So Lucifer is the primary counterpart to Neo. And he is the first agent of Sam. But as in the, you see in the first movie, he takes off his earpiece at one point, And he starts talking to Morpheus about how he can't stand the smell right, of Morpheus and humans. And he, Agent Smith, starts to go through this process whereby as Neo transforms him at the end of the first movie, is now entirely not an agent anymore. He is no longer, he even says in this other way, I'm no longer an agent of the system. What is he then? He is Smith. Well, Smith, first of all, is an agent. He's a, someone who brings things about, right? And he's you know, an agent in the sense also of a spy, so he sort of works for the government. And he's a Smith, which is a, someone who forges, right? And also he mentioned he's sort of every man. Well, he literally becomes every man in the second movie, right? He starts copying himself. He becomes a, essentially like a virus. Which he was talking about to Morpheus in the first one. He says humanity is the virus. Humanity is a cancer, right? Now Smith is actually embodying the spread of a cancer by taking over all of the life inside the matrix. And this is a picture of what the Luciferic type of being would do. If we imagine... The Luciferic being, I mean, most you probably know your basic Bible stories, as the fallen angel, right? 